The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Nick Zolovich, part of the team at Cherokee Media Group, and senior editor of Auto Fin Journal and Subprime Auto Finance News. In today's webinar, How Catastrophes Change the Game, Industry Behaviors and Challenges in a Fluctuating Auto Market, we're going to learn more from Ann Holtzman who is Senior Vice President of Claim and Recovery at Allied Solutions, providers of insurance, lending, and marketing products to more than 4,000 financial institutions nationwide. But before we get started, I want to go over a few housekeeping items for today's webinar. Please make sure you've dialed in using the phone number provided in your communication email, or you're able to listen via your PC speakers. We are recording today's webinar, and we'll make that recording available to you as soon as possible. You will be in listen-only mode for this webinar, but we will reserve some time after Anne's presentation for a Q&A session. You can submit your questions at any time through the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel. And if we aren't able to get to your question today, don't worry, because we'll forward it to the team at Allied Solutions so they can respond back to you directly via email. And finally, if you have any difficulty during the webinar today, please click on the hand icon to alert a member of our team. So with plenty of knowledge and recommendations to share, let's get right to Anne for our webinar. Anne, take it away. Thank you, Nick, so much. And thank you all for joining. I'm very excited today to share with you some information um, very pertinent to what's been occurring in the last couple of years in regard to insurance catastrophe. So first and foremost, I'm going to talk a little bit about the factors that are impacting auto insurance premiums and practices and how that will relate to you, the lender, during 2019 and beyond. Finally, how are these factors affecting you as a lender inside your organization, or will they or could they affect you in the future, depending on what weather events we have in store for us during 2019 and beyond? And finally, what are the things that you can do to get in the game and ensure that you've got the most effective plan and practices when weather catastrophes occur? So if we can, Laura, go on to the next slide, factors in impacting auto insurance, both industry and practices for 2019. New car sales at record levels are definitely impacting uh, what we see, what we're feeling, and what we're hearing in the marketplace. As you can tell, 2016, 17, and 18, there has been a significant and record level setting new car sales. As a result of these new car sales, more cars are definitely on the road today than ever before. The models on the road are newer than they have been ever before, and the cars are much more valuable. This year alone, in reviewing CCC's crash report, one of the industry-leading auto insurance and auto repair industry experts, they're stating that computer systems and safety systems alone, when damaged, can cause a vehicle to move from being a repairable vehicle to being a total loss vehicle. Furthermore, when there's instances such as flood and fire and significant hail damage, these systems are damaged beyond repair. And so insurance companies are seeing and paying much more dollars related to total loss than they ever have in the past. Looking just then at the regular loan terms between 2017 and 2018, there was almost a 5% increase in the average amount being loaned or lent or borrowed on the part of borrowers, pushing that up to nearly $32,000 for a vehicle loan in 2018. And finally, average loan terms are continuing to increase. That isn't a surprise to any of you on the telephone, but as these terms increase and the values of the vehicles also increase, depreciation on these vehicles increases at a higher rate early on in the early months of the loan. 
Thus, if there's a total loss or incident to a vehicle within the first two years of that vehicle being purchased, there is a significant chance that that vehicle will have a high deficiency balance on it even after a total loss has been paid. All of this increased pricing leads to higher loans, longer loan terms, so that most borrowers can have a car payment that is affordable. With all of that happening, we see significant issues that the insurance industry must get their arms around in regard to handling both repairs and total losses in 2019 and beyond. Used car values also are continuing to decrease. In 2017 and 2018, there was almost a 1% change in the number of vehicle sales of used vehicles in the marketplace. Not anything significant, meaning there was still a strong demand for used cars. However, you also saw an increase in the loan value of these used cars, once again, putting more pressure on insurance companies that have to handle repairs, replacement, and total losses related to used cars. In addition, longer loan terms are also being seen in the used car market, just like they are in the new car market. In addition to these three factors, there is also significant depreciation that occurs in the early stages of a used car purchase, negative equity being rolled into these used cars from a vehicle that was either traded in or in many cases didn't have appropriate refunds applied and so they financed negative equity into their next loan. And furthermore, as it relates to used cars, the insurance carriers in our marketplace today are dealing with an issue that they have not had to deal with in the past, and that is the transparency of incidents, accidents, mileage, and other factors related to that used car. As a result, many consumers who have a used vehicle that's been involved in a serious accident prefer that the insurance company total their vehicle versus repair it because of the transparency on things such as Carfax and auto check, and it brings down the value of the car when they either go to trade it in or sell it. In addition, these buying trends have also led to more leases and subscription service and the addition of products on the loan, such as mechanical breakdown and gaps because of the amount being financed. For all of these reasons, it is very difficult for lenders to accomplish all the recovery optimization that they need to do when a vehicle is either repossessed, paid off early, or more importantly, is a total loss. Looking now at our overall catastrophe season, we have seen a significant uptick since 2015 and the amount of property damage catastrophes that have occurred in the United States. Looking just at 2015 to 2016, there was a 450% increase in the total dollars spent related to U.S. national hazard catastrophes. 2017 marked a significant milestone in the amount of catastrophe activity that was experienced in the United States. And most personal and commercial lines insurers carry the brunt of that physical damage. So if you look at the instance between 2016 and 2017, it went from a spend of $18.19 billion to close to $88 billion in just one year a 483% increase. Unfortunately, 2018 is even higher in national disaster, physical damage, property damage than 2017. So how is that affecting you and the automobile insurance industry? First of all, the automobile insurance industry is feeling significant pressure related to the several years of catastrophe activity. Both national and regional weather events have had a large impact on this industry. 
and the insurance carriers now must behave in a way to protect both their mutual customers as well as those individuals that they insure given the substantial amount of catastrophe activity that we have seen in 2017 and 2018. These trends are not slowing down. It's estimated in 2018 that $91 billion will be spent on property damage. In addition, significant lives have been lost in 2018, and we are still waiting on the official numbers from the Insurance Institute on the amount of physical damage incidents that occurred in 2018, but it is expected to surpass the 2017 figures, which as we know was a very active season. As you look at wildfires, hurricanes, hail damage, and other significant events such as flooding, insurance companies across our country are faced with higher frequency and severity of losses, and in doing so, have certain practices and behaviors that they will put into place in order to salvage the difference between insurance premiums and insurance losses. All of that will affect you, the lender, as you have the financial interest in a majority of the collateral that those insurance companies insure. So how exactly will this affect you as a lender? First and foremost, there is a consumer factor. A higher number of loans are upside down or have deficiencies that play into that loan at the time of inception. So many insurance claims will not cover an insurance loan's outstanding balance, putting then a deficiency balance in place that you must address even after an insurance company has paid their claim. People in multi-collar households tend to leave a vehicle behind in the event of an evacuation, flood or hurricane or a wildfire where they have previous notice that they must evacuate. In many cases, they will do one of two things. They will leave a vehicle which has the least amount of value. Um, they will leave a vehicle that is insured versus a vehicle that is not insured and take the uninsured vehicle with them. Again, having an insurance carrier there, that is the safety net. And in many cases, folks find the opportunity during a catastrophe event to be able to part with a vehicle purchase in which they may not be perfectly happy or feel that they're over their head in payment. So we see many instances in catastrophes where folks intentionally abandon vehicles in order to be able to start over. Unfortunately, what's not understood is that the insurance claim will not cover the full loan balance and you as a lender or that person as a consumer must make up the difference. And that's difficult to do in a situation where there has been significant loss of life or loss of property due to a natural catastrophe event. In addition, insurance companies run on a three-year actuarial triangle. That determines what they are going to charge and what consumers are going to pay as a result of premiums. Because of the last two years, 2017 and 2018, it's anticipated that insurance premiums on both personal and commercial automobile will increase substantially. When this happens, and it comes down to a choice between paying an insurance premium and paying the payment on a vehicle, most consumers will opt to drop insurance and make their payment, leaving you, the lender, exposed for collateral that is uninsured. Insurance companies during the time of a catastrophe also have resources that become strained, just like you do inside a lending institution. Employee resources are stretched to handle an influx of calls and claims, some of which could equal the volume of claims that they receive in a six or 12 month period. They are focused on the speed of the claim settlement and not keeping insurance reserves for catastrophe 
on their books for long periods of time. And they also understand that consumers are negatively affected by these catastrophes and they are doing all they can to ensure that payments are prompt based on insurance policies in force and also the regulations that are being placed on them by the different state agencies, especially the Department of Insurance. In addition, their ability to inspect collateral is limited, and there is a strong reliance on automated processes, tools, and resources to address the volume of claims coming in during a catastrophe. All of this leads to situations where that particular insurance settlement may not be accurate. We find in our data that one in every three claims paid on a total loss during a period of catastrophe is not paid accurately. In other words, in an effort to focus on the speed of the claim settlement, there is an accuracy issue on that claim settlement for lenders and consumers. So it's very important at the time of a catastrophe to ensure that you as a lender have the right resources in place to ensure that you're being paid what you should for damage to collateral tied to any natural catastrophe. In addition, inside the lender and lending organizations, you all are faced with higher call volume, increased letters, inc I'm sorry, increased requests, for letters of guarantee, and you also feel the impact of these natural catastrophes on your consumers and borrowers. In addition, staff is not trained for the need to negotiate and manage the claim negotiation process, which will lead to you accepting undervalued collateral settlements due to the market conditions and the volume that is moving through your organization. And finally, it puts a strain on resources to ensure that the correct and refundable products tied to any loan are canceled as a result of that total loss or forced repossession due to a natural catastrophe. In addition to all of those factors, you too must follow all state mandated changes as they relate to collection practices, vehicle valuations, title issues, and other issues involving impound and abandoned vehicles as outlined by that state dealing with a catastrophe situation. You further become stressed because of the number of abandoned vehicles. We saw in the floods that occurred in the Houston area how significant abandoned and impounded vehicles became as a part of you, the lender's loss process. State laws strongly dictate how these vehicles must be dealt with and titled as a result of natural catastrophes. It is imperative that as a lender, you are provided the information that you need in order to ensure that you're dealing with your collateral in a state-specific and regulatorily approved manner. Vehicle titles must sit in the right status to not delay the process. So as a vehicle moves from an abandoned or repossessed vehicle it, to a total loss, the title must follow the right process. It is imperative as a lender that you have resources secured ahead of any natural catastrophe to ensure that you can move the vehicle titles through the appropriate process in an efficient but accurate way. And finally, there is significant need for you as a lender to build cooperation and ongoing communication with insurance companies to ensure that you properly manage the number of vehicles that are either total losses, impounded or abandoned as a part of a natural catastrophe. 2017 and 2018 posed significant impacts to the GAAP insurance product. Consumer GAAP knowledge on GAAP and what it should pay is at a all-time high. However, 
there is still a significant knowledge gap with most consumers in even knowing that they have gaps and what gaps should pay. The underlying total loss insurance industry is dependent upon gaps in times of natural catastrophe and oftentimes see gap as a stop gap coverage to help ensure that loan balances are preserved regardless of the total loss settlement that's been secured on with the underlying carrier. Both frequency and severity of gaps has increased in 2017 and 2018 due to natural disasters, putting even more pressure on gap providers, either direct or indirect, that pay off loan balances inside your lending institution. In addition, they are receiving higher scrutiny from regulatory agencies related to refundable gap uh, refunds based on total loss, repossession or early payoff. And most folks see claim filing practices and the understanding of claim filing requirements still as a big unknown in the world of GAP. Having the right provider and consummate servicer for both GAP and total loss can help you immensely during the time of natural catastrophe. In addition, ensuring that you're able to recover not only from underlying carriers and gap carriers, but also on repossessed collateral is critical during a natural catastrophe. And finally, ensuring that you know how to properly evaluate collateral will also be important during the time of either a regional or natural catastrophe. So as a lender, what can you do what information should you have at your fingertips? And what kind of plan should you have in place to ensure that you can optimize and also minimize your risk during the time of natural catastrophe? I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit next game plan. Do you know and do you understand your current risk exposure? For example, do you know and do you understand the number of consumers that you may have that may be affected by a natural catastrophe? Do you have records and reports that you can pull to ensure that you understand your risk exposure? What might have insurance uh, policies that can speak and benefit you based on that collateral? And where are you exposed or uninsured? Are you utilizing your analytics to assess your risk, exposure, and impact, or do you have a strong partner that can help you in that space? Do you have a game plan for both national and regional weather events? Regional events such as wildfire, hail, and other storms can affect you as a lender regionally, although they don't get the headlines in the news as a natural event. Hail damage totals more vehicles annually than flood and fire combined. Do you have a plan to optimize settlement figures and ensure that your consumers are getting the benefit of all insurance products and the proper refunds tied to those products during the time of a total loss? And finally, how is your business going to ensure compliance with insurance regulations, federal regulations, and most importantly, individual state regulations during a natural catastrophe? Changes in the insurance market will be here to stay for the next few years based on the 80 to 90 to $100 billion in property damage that's been sustained in 2017 and 2018. Based on that, insurance carriers have got significant financial pressures and will be sticking close to ensuring that $1 of insurance that should not be paid is not paid. And are you ready for that level of diligence and duty on the part of insurance companies to ensure that you too can optimize recovery from them as well as other programs and outside services that may be available to you. 
In addition, it's very important that you use all forms of recovery optimization during times of a natural catastrophe to do your best in reducing deficiency balances from consumers who are affected. I'm going to cite now just a little bit of a results in action case study that I think might bring this point home and give you some better ideas of what dollars you may or may not be missing. In 2018, Allied Solutions handled total losses within our own insurance operation, as well as total loss settlement and valuations on the part of our lender clients who were self-insured. During 2018, we had total loss recovery of almost $53 million. Of that $53 million, we found that 24% of it was initially undervalued by the insurance company or there were errors in the settlements and the amount that they were offering to either us or our lender clients. The average amount per vehicle that was undervalued in one out of every four vehicles was $517. That was just for regular insurance claims. When you then look at natural catastrophe, you expand that to be almost one in every three vehicles and an average miss of nearly $800. So consider this, if you're settling a thousand total loss claims a month and during the time of a catastrophe, every thousand total loss claims that you get, 240 of those could have improved recoveries of $500 or more, or $120,000 that could be applied to deficiency balances for you and your consumers if you have the proper game plan and insur insurance valuation methodology that's been lined up prior to any natural catastrophe. In addition, these same practices can assist you during normal insurance claim activity, such as accidents or incidents, collision or comprehensive, that may or may not be related to a catastrophe. In addition to just looking at total loss impact, there's also other actionable areas for lenders. Consider a threshold range in which you as a lender will opt to accept an insurance settlement or issue a letter of guarantee. The normal rule of thumb would be 10% of the value as determined by the valuation method inside your own organization. That could be using NADA, MMR, Kelly Blue Book, or other valuation services. Many insurance carriers use automated insurance valuation tools such as CCC, Mitchell, and ADP, and having insurance appraisal resources inside your organization or through an outsourced service provider using the tools and technologies that the insurance industry use could be to significant benefit for you inside a lending organization. Ensure that you are able to use internal resources as well as outside provider resources and compare those valuations. In other words, what are you accepting before you provide a letter of guarantee with or without a valuation service? And then how could that valuation service benefit you and your consumers? If you have a direct gap program, it's absolutely critical that you have an independent voice as to the valuation of the underlying collateral, in addition to an independent voice reviewing the gap claim and gap claim settlement for accuracy and optimization. You also must ensure that you use gap coverage that is available to the consumer each and every time there is a claim that should be pursued. You also must, as you all know, keep consumers in mind. 
as we think about insurance proceeds and the issues that occur during natural disasters, we're definitely focused on the human aspects of those incidents across our country. It is important that consumers be kept in the foremost of your mind as you're going about settling claims and handling incidents for these borrowers who are affected. It is very important that you have a communication plan and there are consistent protocols and plans across different segments of your organization from collections to remarketing to insurance servicing to ensure that everyone has a set role and responsibility as well as are employing best practices during the times of regional and natural catastrophes. Product cancellation and product refund liability is also becoming a issue and practice that's in the forefront of a lot of the regulatory agencies today. During times of natural catastrophes, where we see high incidence of total loss and gap, we also see a high incidence in the need to cancel refundable products that may be tied to a loan that's been affected by a catastrophe. It is critical that there are appropriate protocols and practices as well as services available to ensure that these vehicles get the correct and product proper product refund and cancellation triggers run through a dealer and run through insurance carriers to ensure a proper refund to the consumer and application to the deficiency balance on that loan. As you can imagine, just as consumers are affected, so are the dealerships that you do business with. It is absolutely critical that you have a set process to ensure that that dealer has refunded that product to the consumer because they get overwhelmed, just like insurance companies do, is in ensuring that these products are canceled as a result of the total loss. And finally, having what I call a catastrophe team and a catastrophe plan is critical. And doing that during the time like now, from this point until June, July, August, when a majority of these catastrophes uh, begin to ramp up for the season, sitting down with all areas of your organization and establishing a plan, even looking at outsourced services related to these incident is very important. That way, when the catastrophe occurs, you have a plan and outsource resources or additional resources inside your own organization that can move within departments to help out during a time of significant activity around collateral. The best time to plan is when you are not faced with the catastrophe or when the catastrophe has already occurred. It's very important as you move through 2019 and 2020 to understand that consumers are going to feel significant pressure on their insurance programs. Rates and coverages are going to have to be affected based on the strong amount of property damage that we've seen in 2018, 2019, and 2017. The industry cannot sustain the type of losses that it has been sustaining and keep the same rates and the same coverages. As a result, it is putting more pressure on you, the lender, to ensure that you understand what is happening and have the right valuation services and exposure services so that you understand exactly what may or may not be happening to your portfolio during these changing insurance times. I thank you so much for your time today and look forward to your questions or comments. Nick, back to you. 
Thank you so much, Anne. A lot of great information and recommendations uh, there shared by Ann Holtzman, who is the Vice, Senior Vice President of Claims and Recovery at Allied Solutions, our special guest expert for today's webinar, How Catastrophes Change the Game, Industry Behaviors and Challenges in a Fluctuating Auto Market. And just as a reminder, we are recording today's webinar, so you can uh, review uh, the great information that Ann has shared and, and, and also send it around uh, your shop so uh, your colleagues can review the, the great information as well. And if you have questions for Ann, please use the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll get to uh, as many questions as we can during our time together today. And, and, and perhaps, again, you, you, you referenced it uh, toward the end of your presentation, and if, if you could just, just, if you could just, your reaction to the, the, the just mind-boggling numbers of, of losses that have has occurred the last couple of years. Just what's been the, the dialogue that you've had with with finance companies, with insurance carriers, with uh, uh, state and federal regulators about those figures? Just just how is the entire industry absorbing all of that information and, and trying to get their arms around what what is is ahead, is ahead of them? Nick, that's an absolutely great question. What I would tell you is um, my colleagues and I spent, you know, 25 of, of what's now 35 years of the industry in that property and casualty automobile market. And I will tell you, the folks that handle losses inside those um, carriers, such as your progressives, nationwide, Hartford's out there, um, they, they're strained in um, just the financial impact of these storms. And when that happens, um, the first place they'll look is, you know, um, number one, at, at retaining or obtaining increases and filing increases with the state for additional premiums on policies. Um, they'll underwrite much stricter. So, um, and we're hearing that where they'll put, you know, um, folks into different risk categories, which then, you know, may or may not make them eligible for certain coverages or certain deductibles. Um, again, uh, leaving lenders exposed. Um, you know, they've had a significant strain on resources and, you know, really have no choice but to do some robotic processing of claims because of the number of claims that they've had and the amount of physical damage that they've had to handle through these storms. And as a result, um, I always think of claim adjusting as an art, not a science. And so um, when you don't have the human element assessing valuations of vehicles, um, the truth of the matter is that, you know, you don't have that expertise and as a result, the valuations, you know, will follow a robotic path, um, many times not fully accurate um, or, or um, inaccurate or undervalued. And so those are things that, you know, we see across the industry. In addition, I think consumers have yet to see the rate increases. They are going to come this year um, because of the two you know, really high loss years, 2017 and 2018. And so I think we're going to see folks that opt to, um, with increased automobile payments and higher loans and more expensive cars, you know, their option is going to be to not pay for their insurance. And so do you know that when it happens? Because you then as a lender, if you don't have an insurance program, are fully exposed. So those are the things that I'm hearing and seeing. Um, we're also seeing total losses continue to tick up um, in double digits year over year, mainly because vehicles today, because of the complexity of their computer systems, et cetera, um, basically are having, um, it's much more difficult to repair them. And so, you know, those total losses in many cases leave our lenders with deficiency balances because the total loss ACV valuation does not pay off the loan balance. So all of those factors 
um, you know, really play into ensuring that you're optimizing those figures and that you're moving those total loss settlements through your organization quickly, but accurately to ensure that that consumer can get back into another vehicle and hopefully another loan with your lending institution. Very good. The voice you're hearing, again, is Ann Holtzman, who is the Senior Vice President of Claims and Recovery at Allied Solutions. She's our special guest for today's webinar, How Catastrophes Change the Game, Industry Behaviors and Challenges in a Fluctuating Auto Market. And uh, during your presentation, Ann, you shared a, a lot of great uh, recommendations for finance companies that, of all sizes. It, if you could perhaps just uh, reiterate and, and revisit some of the the, the best practices on, on how to to handle those claims and the and the various categories where they can arise uh, involving total loss uh, gap or or product cancellation. If you could just kind of or highlight some some of those really best practices in each of those categories. I think most importantly is to ensure that you've you understand your exposure and also understand what the state regulations require of you as a lender. Um, those regulations come out um, through bulletins, through the state agencies, and you need to ensure as a lender that you're following those practices. I would say that's first and foremost. Second, you need to have a plan as to how you're going to receive incoming um, notification of what I call the triggering event, meaning how are you going to find out as a lender um, what, you know, methodology are you going to employ to ensure that you have strong communication plans to take total loss phone calls from insurance carriers or ensure that when you do that, then you're also advising that consumer borrower that they have gaps as uh, coverage on their collateral and ensuring that they notify their dealer um, or the gap carrier to place a claim or you as a lender taking on that responsibility for that consumer. So ensuring that you've got a methodology to take that information in and that you also have the ability to evaluate the total loss figures that that insurance company is providing for you during the time of the letter of guarantee. The moment you release your letter of guarantee, you basically have lost all negotiation power and valuation power. So making sure that you can properly evaluate total losses and can optimize that total loss settlement is key. In addition, ensuring that each and every time there's another coverage that's applicable for, on that collateral, such as GAP in the case of a total loss, ensuring that that borrower knows what to do, where to go, and how to file that claim, and that you as the lender, where appropriate, file that claim as well, and provide all needed documentation and information on that GAP claim. Uh, the gap providers also get overwhelmed during this time, so making sure you've got the right follow-up practices and plans is very critical or the right outsourcer to handle those on your behalf to ensure that no gap claim goes um, unindemnified, meaning that each one is adjudicated as it should be. And then finally, um, where there are products that are ancillary to that loan that then must be canceled and refunded because it's now a total loss, that there is a good strong record of service of that being done and the refund finding its way to the consumer. All of those touch points are very critical inside you as a lender where you have accepted that loan package and that loan on that consumer. So it definitely packs uh, internal resources inside a lender and makes it very, very important that either they can bring additional resources to those areas and ensure that the right valuations occur and the right practices occur or seek an outsourced uh, solution provider um, to help you through those tough times. 
Very good. Again, the, the voice you're hearing, that's Ann Holtzman, who is the Senior Vice President of Claims and Recovery at Allied Solutions. And, and just as a final reminder, we are recording today's uh, webinar, How Catastrophes Change the Game, Industry Behaviors and Challenges in a Fluctuating Auto Market. So please keep watch of your inbox for a message containing a link uh, to the recording so you can review the great information that Ann has shared and distribute it uh, around your shop for, for future reference and, and how to prepare. And to wrap up our, our, our time today, Ann, uh, I, perhaps whatever you can share looking forward, uh, hurricane season is, is, is not that far away. Just any insights or on, on an outlook on, on how the catastrophic impact uh, in 2019 might be for for auto finance companies, for insurers, just just what's on uh, Allied Solutions radar to to keep watch of as as the height of of storm season uh, comes along and in 2019 continues. Thank you, Nick. Yes, I think most importantly, it's um, ensuring that you have your catastrophe plans in order. Um, you. As I said before, the time to develop a catastrophe plan is not when there's a catastrophe. Um, it's well before, and I will tell you that in our organization, um, you know, that's a that's a year-round process for us. Um, second of all, I think what's really important and different this year than we've seen in 17 or or 18 is um, the states are really cracking down on. Um, issues related to vehicles that have been involved in catastrophes. And what I mean by that, um, we have seven to nine states now that have passed um, certain valuation guidelines as a part of the Department of Insurance regulations, basically saying that insurance carriers have to pay retail value on total losses. I have in my 30 some years now, never seen a state mandate uh, valuation on total loss at a retail level. And we're seeing that for the first time because of the number of um, inaccurate ACV calculations, actual cash value calculations that occurred and consumers that had significant shortfalls in 17 and 18. So you as a lender want to make sure that you know what's owed by each state um, and, and by each regulation in the states to ensure you're not shorted. Um, I think finally um, to the crackdown on the refunds as a result of total losses is something else that, that we are um, seeing and believe will be um, very active in 2019 as a part of just the overall uh, consumer benefit. Um, the storms definitely brought attention to um, these refundable products, and I think that will continue into 2019. And finally, as we see the used car market harden, you should see your total loss settlement, even outside of catastrophe, begin to increase a little bit inside your lending institutions. If you're not seeing that, then I would really encourage you to think about a valuation service because we are seeing that occur today. That is the, the total loss values increase out there. And then finally, Nick, what I would say is I would state that most lenders need to be prepared for more versus less total losses than they have seen in the past. Um, I think that trend will continue. Again, that's Ann Holtzman, who is Senior Vice President of Claims and Recovery at Allied Solutions. Ann, thank you again for joining us. It's great to collaborate again on what certainly is a, a vitally important topic that is not going away. Yes, thank you, Nick, and thank you so much for having us today. And there on the screen is uh, resources that uh, the Allied Solution uh, has available at its website, uh, www.alliedsolutions.net. And there is Anne's uh, contact information as well. If uh, you and, and your colleagues at your shop think of, of, of questions, you can reach out to Anne and the Allied Solutions team directly 
uh, to get some assistance with, again, uh, certainly complicated topics, how catastrophes change the game, industry behaviors and challenges in a fluctuating auto market. So we thank you for joining us and for all of us at Cherokee Media Group. I'm Nick Zulovich. We thank you for joining us and we look forward to having you again next time.